Hi everyone, I'm Tracy and welcome to my channel. So today I have some updated foundation brushes that I wanted to show you guys. They're not necessarily new to the market, but they're new to, I guess, me using them for foundation and some for concealer. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert b-roll <clears throat> uh, by the way i'm still on the men from getting sick this week so i'm a little my voice is kind of struggling today so that's what's going on and i'm a little tired but anyhow i really wanted to get something up because i haven't taken this much time off from my channel uh, for some time so i think it's it's going on two weeks now but anyhow i have some exciting foundation brushes that I want to show you guys and then I have some updates on my kind of newer brushes that I've been really enjoying. I'm going to show you guys how I use them. Let me start out with the foundation brushes. I put a post up yesterday and I feel like every time I put a post up of foundation brushes there's always a lot of interest because it's not always easy to figure out what kind of brush to get for a foundation because they can range you know from anything from you know a weasel brush like this to a little round brush like this to a big you know round flat brush like this so i'm going to try to break it down for you guys and share with you guys how i utilize the different shapes of brushes for foundation and i'll insert b-roll where i have it so the kind of brushes i use for the initial application so for example the ahoto lq3 is one of my favorite um, brushes to get the product on so i'll like i'll yeah i'll usually dip this in the foundation and um, spread it around my face another one i really like is the yuki takashima number five i don't know if this still is still available but i'm sure the ahoto is they're very similar the yuki one is bigger these are so good for foundation because they don't soak up a lot of product and they're very easy to clean and they dry very quickly so a lot of the other brushes i'm going to show you guys it's not the case they're they're difficult to clean and they take a long time to dry and with your foundation brushes so this is a little different from what i used to say but you really should wash them after each use because foundation is you know it's liquid unless you're using powder foundation it is going to attract bacteria and mold and then you're going to be putting that on your face so i am trying to get into the habit of washing them after each use and that means i wash these at least once a week and i probably should get maybe another one of like these initial application brushes so i talked about the ahoto and the yuki takashima <clears throat> i also like the uh, chikohoto g10 for the initial application again it's small it, it does absorb a little bit more but it's good for just getting that foundation on this one you could pat as well but you're going to need something after to kind of smooth out the streaking and yeah, just like kind of buff the product in and press the product in. So these brushes are ones that I'm going to talk about are ones that I use for that purpose. All right. So these three rougher brushes, I don't think I've ever used them on my channel because they're, they're some of their newer brushes, but one that I've been really liking and I didn't think I would like this brush is the number 35 so again this is like initial application for foundation to get into like smaller areas a little big for you know buffing but like if you want to like kind of smooth out areas like this if you have large pores like me and you want to press the product in I like this one especially for like here like um, between the eyes and the nose. Also to blend the concealer in with your foundation. I really like this one. Also, if you're doing, um, if you're a makeup artist or you're doing someone else's makeup and they have like very small face, like a very narrow face, I find this brush works really well. Uh, not so much my case, but I sometimes do other people's makeup. And I find like with someone with very fine features, this brush is really good for that. And it's just a you know, perfect size for um, like around the eyes. And yeah, really great, great for pressing in product. 
Another brush that I really like for this purpose, and I've mentioned this before, is the Chicohoto T3. So it's just bigger and it's flatter. This one, I don't like using it to dip into foundation because it's so dense. Also, the hairs are really fine. So I just feel like I have to be more delicate with this brush. So I use this as like a final you know, kind of like pressing um, product in. I also pressed in primer with this, especially like here, this is normally where I have to do that. And I really love this brush, really well made. The Takumi series is one of my favorite Chikuhoto series, um, reasonably priced and really well made. And then the 37, another one that I use similarly, um, kind of similarly to the T3, but this one is not as dense. So I'll kind of buff out um, streaks, you know, press in product. This is also good for cream blush and cream bronzer. But yeah, I really like this to smooth everything out. I think this is what I use to kind of, you know, blend everything in. Really multifunctional. Another brush I use for this purpose is the Yoshiki Y1, the uh, the largest of the series. This is good for buffing because it's dense, but it's not super dense. It's not going to like take away the foundation. It really gives your your liquid or cream foundation a very smooth, seamless finish. Um, very comfortable to use. Not like the not the finest of hairs but that's kind of why I like it for foundation. I don't feel like I have to be as fragile with the Yoshiki series. Let me see. There's a lot that I use in this manner. And another one, the Refer 24. Um, I used this when I was doing my, um, my blush brush video and I had to cover up um, the blush, you know, like 15 times because this one is softer. This one's softer than the Yoshiki. So if you have sensitive skin and you're looking for something to press and buff foundation in, I think you'll like this one. A lot of people use this for powder bronzer or, or cream bronzer. It is a bronzer brush, but I think it's best for foundation and uh, a really good buy. You know, they're having their sale. If you can get this, you know, 40, 50% off, this is a really um, great buy, I think, the, the 24. And I think this is one of their most popular brushes. So again, you know, pressing in product, smoothing everything out. Another one I use for this purpose is the Refer 4. This one is even more fluffy. So if you don't want a denser brush for smoothing out your foundation, this is a really good one. It's also good for cream blush and cream contour. So very multifunctional. I know this is meant for powders, but I've really only used it for cream and liquid products. Not for initial application, application, but for, you know, after, um, you know, smoothing everything out. These two I'm using mainly for concealer, and that is a Refer 33. I don't even know if these are meant for cream products, but I love this for concealer. If I'm kind of in a rush and I'm not looking for, like, you know, precision from a weasel hairbrush, also, this hair, these hairs are very soft. This brush is very soft, you know, for a rougher brush. And the shape makes it perfect for getting in, like, the corner of the eye and just really um, getting that concealer on, pressing it in in a very comfortable way. Also, to set the lids and to get little areas like this. So, very useful brush. Um, very unique, I think, the 33. I don't think I have anything else like this one. Same with this one, the, the 36. And um, again, I don't, I think this might actually be for concealer. One hair is coming out. And that's what I've been using it for. And again, this area to press in concealer. If you really, if you want to get like a, a heavier, more coverage out of your concealer, this is a good one because it's going to really concentrate that product right here for getting like, you know, in the, this part right here. Also, if you want to press powder, you know, you don't want to use a sponge. I've used this to powder this area because of my sunglasses. So yeah, I've been really liking these product, these type of um, rougher brushes for concealer and foundation. And do I have any more? Um, I'll quickly mention this one. I've been <clears throat> using the T11. I've been carrying this one around with me because on the go, 
so sometimes I, I do have to do my makeup like in the car especially recently I've been a little bit busier so I when I do my makeup on the go I usually bring a stick concealer it's just easier if I need to I can just put directly on from the stick and then blend out with a brush like this and it looks beautiful so I like the combination of the Chikohoto T11 with the Huda Beauty stick stick foundation really nice very fast very natural um, you don't need to set it because like this is kind of already sets you know you don't have to powder everything so um, on the go I've been really liking this combination right here you know I'll, I'll just quickly mention the 31 I've talked about this one so much so many times on my channel I've, I've demoed it many times but this is the brush that I use for foundation if I really want to like cancel everything out and it's also very quick so you can you can do initial application and like smooth and buff everything in press everything in all it in one so you don't have to switch brushes out so um yeah the 31 really good brush if you can get this one on sale it's a deal because Hakuhoto will charge um, at least twice as much for their version and the refer one is is equally as good all right so I'm going to close it out right there I did film um, my brush updates but I I'm going to have to put that into my next video because the video would be pretty long so I will be posting that in the next week and um, yeah, I hope this helps you guys out a lot and I will see you all next time. Bye.